Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and you know what? I have had a ton of requests for my Sony A1 autofocus setup. So in this video, I'll show you how I set the AF menu options, as well as how I do my button customizations. And these button customizations have worked out really well for me. Also, keep in mind that I'm primarily a wildlife photographer, so these settings are optimized for that kind of work. Before we begin though, I want to mention that what you'll learn in this video is only a very small part of what you'll find in my newest book, The Ultimate Sony A1 Setup Guide for Wildlife Photography. That book includes my setup for every menu, not just the autofocus menu, but every menu and every button on this camera, as well as detailed explanations for the reason that I set things the way I do and how I use them in the field. So if you like this video, make sure you'll check that out. You're going to love that guide. So let's start with the focus menu on the A1, then move on to the buttons that I customize for AF. Okay, so we're here on the focus tab, so we're gonna go to AF, MF, and we're gonna go take a look at the items in this list. Now the first one is priority set in AFS. I just leave that at the default of balanced emphasis. I'm a wildlife shooter, I use back button AF. I almost never use AFS. I can't remember the last time I used it. So let's look at priority set in AFC, and we have some choices here. You can see we have three different options. We have AF, release, and balanced emphasis. Let's cover what these do, and then I'll share why I think release is actually the best way to go. First is AF, and when you select this one, you're basically telling the camera to only release the shutter if it has a confirmed AF lock. Next is release, and that's the exact opposite. When you set this, you're telling the camera you want it to go ahead and take a photo regardless of how sharp or blurry the area under the AF point is. Finally, we have balanced emphasis, and that tries to strike a balance between those two. As you can see, I've selected release. At first, this seems a little counterintuitive. After all, why would you want the camera to shoot when the photo wasn't sharp, right? The thing is, that's not exactly how this works out in the field. The AF setting and even the balance emphasis settings are looking for confirmed AF locks. But the thing is, it's completely possible to have a sharp photo without a confirmed AF lock. For example, maybe you're photographing a bird flying by and the AF area slips off of it for just a split second. During that time, it's likely the bird is still perfectly sharp, but the camera can't confirm it. So guess what? In AF and even in balance emphasis, it doesn't take a photo. Another example is if the subject doesn't have a lot of contrast and is a poor AF target. The camera may be tracking it just fine and the subject may be perfectly sharp, but if the camera can't confirm a lock, even for a split second, it's not gonna shoot during that time. Now, I know it seems that maybe balanced emphasis might be the answer here, and you know, I tried it when I first started using the A1, but I found that using it, I kinda still felt like I was leaving shots in the field, like the camera was skipping stuff. So I've set this to release. That way, even if the camera doesn't have a confirmed AF lock for even like a split second, I'm not missing a potentially perfectly sharp image. Plus, it's not like the AF system is just kicking back and relaxing when you set this to release. It's working just as hard as ever to help you send sharp images to your cards. Personally, I'd rather delete a few random soft images now and then than to risk leaving jaw droppers in the field. Release priority allows me to catch all of the sharp but not confirmed shots. Oh, and by the way, you also can't get that maximum frame rate from this camera unless you are in release mode. Now, one quick note about release priority. I go over this a little more in detail in the book, but keep an eye out as you shoot. If you see a subject really slip out of focus as you're shooting, just stop shooting until the AF system locks back on. It saves some sorting time back home. Okay, so next we have AF tracking sensitivity. Let's give that a click. Now, this is one that is always a source of confusion for people, so hopefully I can help clear it up a little bit here. The primary purpose of this setting is to give you a way to tell the camera how it should handle an interruption and in autofocus caused by a significant change in focus distance. For example, let's say you're shooting a bird in flight and it momentarily flies behind a tree. Should the AF system instantly focus on that tree or should it wait and see if that subject reappears? Okay, if it should wait, how long should it wait for? That's what this setting controls. The lower the number, the more locked on the setting, the longer the camera will pause. Now, what if you're shooting a bird in flight and you slip off the target? Should the camera jump to the background or should it hold off for a moment while you get back on target? The values towards the locked on side of the setting kind of help here because it'll tell the camera to wait a little bit longer. Now, 
What about if instead of one bird, maybe you're shooting a large flock of birds and you're jumping from one bird to the other with the autofocus engaged? Should the camera instantly focus on the new bird or should it hold off? Now, in this case, you want the camera to jump to the new target as quickly as possible. So you're going to select a higher, more responsive setting here. Basically, this option comes down to how sticky the AF system is. If you feel like it's dropping your target too easily, selecting a lower value towards the locked on side of the scale will often help. On the other hand, if you're trying to quickly jump from one subject to another with AF engaged, or if the camera is getting stuck on things, either like in the foreground or the background, and it's taking too long to grab back onto your subject once you place the AF area over that subject, the shorter, more responsive settings are in order. Now, what about if you're using a tracking AF area instead of a regular AF area? For the most part, it works the same, although you're really not going to be jumping from subject to subject with AF engaged since the camera won't just release that first target if it still sees it in the viewfinder. You'll have to let off AF and then re-engage. However, there is a cool trick that the A1 does with tracking mode and the AF tracking sensitivity setting. If you're using a tracking AF area and the subject accidentally slips right out of the viewfinder, and don't laugh, it happens sometimes with small, fast birds. If you keep AF engaged and get back on the bird fast enough, get it back in that viewfinder fast enough, the camera usually picks it right back up. And the amount of time you have to pick it back up is controlled by this setting. The closer you are to the locked on side, the longer you have to get that target back in the viewfinder before the camera gives it up. Now, in the end, this really isn't a set it and forget it setting. Most of the time, I seem to do well with the middle setting of three, but if I find the AF seems too sticky or too loose, I'll jump in here right away and adjust it. I keep an option for making that adjustment right on my function menu for fast access. Now, those are the basics, but there are a lot more examples and more, much more detailed explanations in that A1 setup guide I was talking about. So moving on to some of the simpler items in the menu here, we have the AF illuminator, and I have that turned off. Basically, what this is going to do is if you have this engaged, what's going to happen if you're in AFS mode, not AFC mode, only works in AFS, but if you have this engaged in AFS mode and the camera's having a hard time focusing in dim light, it's going to shoot out a bright orange light. Since I don't use AFS mode, it doesn't really matter too much to me, but I go ahead and shut it off anyway. I don't really want a bright light coming out, even if I'm accidentally in AFS mode. <laughs> Aperture drive and AF, I've looked at these settings back and forth and through Sony's literature, and I've come to the conclusion that standard is the way to go here. There's a couple other options and priorities there, but standard seems to be the one that they recommend for pretty much everything, and it's worked well for me. AF with shutter. Our next menu item is basically whether or not we're going to focus with the shutter release or with the back button. Since I'm set on this camera for back button AF, I have this turned off. If you want to use shutter release AF, you'll go ahead and leave this on. The next one is pre-AF, and as you can see, I leave this off, and the reason for that is simple. Sometimes people get tempted with this because it sounds like the camera is going to try to focus on what it thinks the target is before you even start focusing. That's the idea behind it. But the problem is, especially with wildlife, it tends to focus on all the wrong things. And the camera would say, oh, hey, let me do some pre-AF for you, and all of a sudden I'm focused on bushes in front of or behind the subject instead of on the subject. So don't be tempted with this one. Shut it off. Moving on, we're going down to the focus area menu. So let's talk about what we have here. First is the focus area. This is just basically the AF area that you're using. We're going to set a button up later to change these. No one in their right mind changes this in the menu, so we'll just leave it. I happen to be on spot. doesn't really matter. Okay, so next we have the focus area limit. Let's give that a click. And as you can see, I've unchecked most of these. I don't use most of these. So let's talk about the ones I do use and kind of why I use them very briefly. I go over this in a lot more detail in the uh, Sony setup guide, but let's just go over this real quick right here. So the first one is the wide AF area. I don't use that all the time, but there are sometimes there are subjects, like if you have a, a tricky subject up against kind of a clean background or a sky, sometimes that's nice. I have zone. Zone is my kind of go-to for action work. Not all action work, but a lot of my action work, especially birds in flight. Then I have the spot areas checked. I don't use center fixed because center fixed is basically just a centered up version of the uh, large spot AF area. But I do like the spot AF areas. I have small, medium, and large. I use the small spot, obviously, for things where I'm really trying to zero in on a specific focus point on an animal or pick an animal out of a, you know, out of a bunch of them or something like that. And then I have the medium and large. I use those depending on what I'm doing, sometimes for a little action. Sometimes it's nice just to put like a large spot area on a face of an animal with eye detection in, and it'll catch that eye instead of trying to pinpoint the eye with a smaller AF area. So there's a lot of options. Again, I go over this in a little more detail in the book. 
But at any rate, those are the ones I use. I de deactivate expanded spot as well. I don't really use that. I've never found it overly useful for at least for my wildlife work. And if you notice, I don't have any of the tracking areas along the bottom activated. All of these are unchecked. That means they're not going to be selectable. However, there's a reason I do that. I have a button on the camera setup. I'm going to show you how to do this so that when I'm in a normal AF mode, all I have to do is press that button and it's going to go into a tracking mode for me. So that way I don't have to select any of the tracking modes. I just select the AF area that I want and then I can use the tracking version of that with a push of a button. So it's pretty cool. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. So anyhow, that's what I use. Works really well. Okay, so next we have the switch V slash H AF area. So what the heck does that do? Let's give this a quick little click. And we have three options. We have off, AF point only, and the one I currently have selected, which is AF point plus AF area. Now, a lot of times I do have this off. I don't use this all the time, but I do want to show you how it works because sometimes it is handy. So let's talk. So what exactly does this do? The first option, AF point only, will remember where you had the AF point the last time your camera was in a vertical orientation and then where it was the last time the camera was horizontal. Thought of another way, it basically remembers the AF area position in the viewfinder as you switch orientations. The second option is similar, it remembers the AF point plus the AF area so you're remembering both the AF position in the viewfinder and which AF area you were using. This is always a little bit tricky to conceptualize, so let's do an example. Let's say you have this set for the AF point plus AF area option and you're photographing a perched spoonbill. For the posed shots, you simply want to use a small spot AF area positioned towards the top of the frame as shown. However, there are other spoonbills in the area and they are landing right behind you, kind of sporadically though, coming and going. With this setting, you can have the best of both worlds. So while you're in vertical, you set your AF area to the small spot AF area and you put it towards the top of the frame. When you flip the camera horizontal, you set the AF area for zone and you keep it towards the center. Now, when you're waiting for those spoonbills to fly in and you want to photograph that other spoonbill in a vertical fashion, you have the spot AF area at the top. Now, maybe you spot a spoonie coming in, you flip the camera back to horizontal and the AF area switches to zone and jumps right to the center. It's pretty sweet. So anytime you change the AF area or position, the camera's going to remember it for the current orientation and go back to those positions and AF areas anytime you flip the camera. So the adjustments are actually pretty automatic. So I'm going to leave that set for now and let's go down to focus area color. And right now I have that set for white. You can set that for white or red. I find white works pretty well. Next is AF area registration. And right now I have that set to on. So let's talk about this. First, some full disclosure here. I no longer use this setting because my AF toggle setup is so fast that switching AF areas from one to the other really isn't a big deal for me. However, this is handy for some wildlife work and some wildlife photographers. So I did want to mention it in the video here. This setting allows you to register an AF area of your choice that you can recall using one of the camera's programmable buttons. This is really handy when you want a secondary AF area on another button and you need instant access. Just set in a registered AF area, press the button, and you're good to go. If you want to use it, simply make sure it's turned on here in the menu. Next, select the AF area you would like to register. For example, let's say I want to register Zone AF so I can press a button and recall it anytime I like. To register, I simply go down and I change my AF area to Zone and then I long press the function button. So I'm going to do that here. There we go, there's zone. And now I'm just long pressing the function button. And you can see I have a message, registered the focus area. That is now my registered AF area. So the next thing is I need to assign this to a button. In this example, I'm going to assign it to my lens button, but you can assign it pretty much anywhere. Let me show you how this is done. So we're going to go back to our menu. And you only have to do this once. You don't have to do this each time. Once it's assigned to the button, it's assigned there, the registered AF area. So we're going to go way out of here. And we're going to go down to our setup menu, operation customize, and custom key setting there at the top for photos. And then I'm going to go all the way down to the lens, because that's where I'm going to put it. And again, I do want to emphasize, you can put this anywhere you want for the most part. So it's, for this example, we just happen to be using the lens button. I'm going to give that a click. And what you'll do is you'll go to the focus area item here in this little selection menu here. And just go to where it says registered AF area. And 
T-G-G-L-E is short for toggle. I like the toggle option. Basically what that means is when I press the button, it's going to switch to my registered AF area until I press the button again. It's going to hold it there. Now you have a couple other options here too. You can use the top one here, the one right above it that says registered AF area hold. What will happen if you choose that option is that when you press the button, it'll change to your registered AF area, but only for as long as you hold. So if you want to just temporarily jump to that and then let go and jump back to whatever AF area you were using before, you'll want to use the hold option. I recommend if you're going to use that one, though, to put it on one of the buttons on the back of the camera that's a little bit easier to access with your thumb. And the other one is registered AF area plus AF on. If I set that one, when I press the button, it's also going to focus for me as well. And it's not going to toggle. Once I let go, it'll be back to normal. So personally, for this particular setting, I like the toggle option. So I press the button. It goes into that AF area for as long as I need it. Then I press whatever program button I have, and then it'll go back. So let's do this. There we go. We're all set. Now, all I have to do to recall my registered AF area is to press the lens button. So let me show you how that works. As you can see right now, we have the spot AF area right in the middle. Now, if I press the lens button, watch what happens. As you can see, it jumps over to zone AF, and I can use zone AF for as long as I want. When I'm ready to go back, I just press the lens function button again, and it'll go back to whatever AF mode I was using prior to that. In this case, the little small spot AF area. Now, one thing that's really nice about this is that you can quickly change your registered AF area if the one you're using is less than ideal. For example, maybe I want to swap between spot AF and wide instead of zone. In that case, I don't need to do anything other than go into the wide AF area like so. I went too far. And then just long press my function button there and instantly I've registered the focus area. Now, if I go back to spot AF, let's go down there. We'll use the medium this time. All I have to do is press the button and it's going to go away. Basically, you're not going to see anything because it's wide AF. It's using the whole viewfinder. If I press it again, it's going to return me back to the spot AF area that I was using a moment ago. So it's really nice because if you need to switch to something other than what you happen to have registered, it's very, very quick to do that. And you don't have to go back in the menus and reprogram anything. Just select the AF area you need, long press the function button, and boom, you have a new registered AF area. Finally, there is a little note I want to pass along here. If you have this set to toggle like I do, and you try to switch AF areas, it's going to give you an error. Let me show you what happens. So I'm going to go to my registered AF area. In this case, we're in wide. And then I'm just going to try to change AF areas here. Then I'm going to get this message, invalid during recalling of the registered focus area. It's not real clear. Basically, what it means is that you're using a registered AF area, and you can't switch to other AF areas using your normal methods. You have to toggle back out. So I would have to basically press that lens button again so I'm no longer, first I have to hit OK. Then I have to press that lens button again in this case to toggle back to my normal AF area mode, and then I can switch it all I want. So that's kind of the only little warning there, but overall it is kind of useful for some people. Again, I don't really use it, but I know there's a lot of people that do, and I just wanted to kind of pass that information along. So next we have the option to delete our registered AF area if we like. So normally, if you want to change registered AF areas, you wouldn't delete it first, you just overwrite it like, we, like you saw us do a few moments ago. But there is a reason to delete it, because sometimes it's a little distracting. Let me show you. I'm going to give you a viewfinder view here. If you notice, we have our single spot AF area there, and I have zone set as my registered AF area. And if you notice, zone is kind of flashing in the background there, and it's kind of distracting. That always drives me nuts a little bit, especially if I'm not currently using my registered AF area. So this menu option actually gives you the option to get rid of that. So if I go in here and tell it to delete the registered focus area, and then I go back, you can see there's no more flashing. So if you're not really using this feature very much or at the moment and you want to just not have that distraction, you can come in here and delete it if you like. Now, you might think, gee, why not just shut off AF area registration, right? You can take this, go to the, you know, and say, hey, shut, let's shut that off and not have to worry about it. But the thing is, if you've already registered an AF area, shutting this off isn't actually going to get rid of that flashing behind it. It's just going to make it so you can't register other AF areas. It's kind of like a lockout. So if you never wanted to register anything but zone, for instance, you can come back in here after you've registered it 
turn this off and then long pressing the function won't register AF areas for you. However, it's still going to be in there. So when you're looking through the viewfinder, you're still going to see that flashing. So that's where the delete registered AF area option comes in. So if you find that distracting like I do, you might want to come in and delete it if you're not currently actively using your registered AF areas. Let's see, next we have AF Area Auto Clear, and this is kind of an AFS setting, not really an AFC setting. Basically what it's gonna do is if you turn this setting on, all it's gonna do is when you achieve focus, when the camera has a focus lock, it's going to make the AF area disappear in the viewfinder, so you don't have that outline of it there, so it's not as distracting. But again, it only works in AFS, so this really isn't in my wheelhouse being an AFC shooter pretty much exclusively. Next, we have area display during tracking, and as you can see, I have this one turned off. So what this does, if it's turned on, and let's say you're using zone AF in tracking mode, normally with this turned off, what happens is once the camera goes into tracking mode, all you see is that little green box. If you turn this on, what you're gonna see is that tracking area plus the original zone AF area that you started with. So personally, I think that's a little distracting and definitely unnecessary because once the camera's on the subject with the little tracking box, you don't really need to know what the, I guess, origin AF area looks like or where it's sitting in the viewfinder. It doesn't really matter anymore. So I shut this one off. Next, we have the AFC area display, and I do leave that one on. Basically, when you're in AFC in, like, in a mode like zone or wide, and you see those little dots on the subject there, you can see the camera kind of painting the subject with little tiny boxes to show you where it's focusing. That's what this is. If that's on, you get to see those, and if it's off, you're not going to see them. So it just depends on whether or not you want to see those little dots. If you find them distracting, you can turn this off. I like to leave it on just because, especially with a big area like zone, I want to know exactly where it's focusing within that area. And you know why it is even worse because it's a much, much larger area. You want to know exactly where it is. So I recommend leaving this on. But if you find those little dots too distracting, come in here, shut it off. Next, we have the phase detect area. And basically what this setting does is if you have a compatible lens on there, usually an adapted lens, it'll show you the phase detect AF area in there. It doesn't really apply to lenses that are like E-mount full frame lenses. So I just leave this off. That's just the default. It doesn't really do anything one way or the other. Next, we have the circulation of focus point option. You have two options here. The first is does not circulate and the other is circulate. So what does this mean? It's actually easier to show you than it is to try to explain it. So let me let me go back to the viewfinder here. Right now we're on does not circulate. And if I move my AF area over to the side, once it gets to that side, it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't, it stops moving. It doesn't pop out the other side. However, if I go back here and select circulate, now when I reach the edge of the viewfinder, watch what happens. It'll pop out the other side. See? Just like that, up, down left or right, whichever. So that's what that does. So if you like the AF area popping out of the other side when it reaches an edge, then you're gonna to wanna to leave this on circulate. For me, I don't like that at all, so I leave it on does not circulate. The problem is, is that most of the time if I'm at the edge of a frame, it's not because I wanna to go to the other side of the frame, it's because there's something there. And if it pops away and the AF area goes away and ends up on the other side, there's a 90% chance I'll drag it all the way back over instead of just you know popping it back. So for me, I'm not like super coordinated like that. So I just leave this on does not circulate. And finally, in our focus area group here, we have the AF frame move amount, and I have mine set to large. Basically what this setting does is it determines how far the AF area is gonna move with each press of your joystick button. Large moves it like maybe a space, space and a half, whereas standard will move it just one little space at a time. It doesn't make a huge difference either way, but large is slightly faster and standard is slightly more granular. It would allow you to get kind of zero in on places a little better if you needed to. Personally, I leave it at large because for wildlife work, I just don't need to be you know that precise. You know, if I'm slight, if I have to move the camera slightly up or down or something, it's not a big deal most of the time. So I leave this on large and it works really well. And there's not like a huge difference between the two of them. In fact, let me give you a little demonstration here. So real quick, I've just superimposed a couple of viewfinder screen grabs here and kind of give you an idea of how this works. The top is large, bottom is the standard setting there. And you can see it's not like significantly different, but the large does allow you to move a little bit faster across the frame, but you still have plenty of granularity in my opinion for wildlife work. And you know, on top of it, since I'm using tracking for probably 80% of what I do, even static subjects, I like to just get on the eye with my tracking area and then compose as needed. 
you know, this to me isn't really a big deal. And I'd rather have a little more speed when I'm moving the area around the viewfinder, kind of get it to where I need it to be. So for me, I choose large for this setting. Let's go back to our other menu. And let's see, we have the face and eye AF menu here. So let's talk about this. The first option is face slash eye priority in AF. You can turn that on or off. I use eye and face detection in this camera all the time. So this is permanently on for me. I do have a toggle that will shut it off if it kind of gets on the wrong thing. So it's very quick to turn it back on and off. But my menu option here is just to you know, start with it on. Next, we have the type of subject, animal, human, or bird. In this case, it happens to be an animal. Again, I have a toggle I'm going to show you on the back of the camera so you can switch this really easily. The next one is the first one really here that I'm going to set, which is subject select setting. And if you notice, I have human unchecked. I don't usually have humans in my viewfinder, so I don't really want that to be something that I have to toggle through when I'm trying to switch between animals and birds. So I uncheck that for me, for my wildlife work. If you do people, you know, leave it checked. But otherwise, I just have animal and bird checked here. Right and left eye select is on auto. I have, again, a toggle for that that I'm going to show you. So I don't mess with that one here. The face eye frame display, I do like to turn that on. What that's going to do is if you have that turned on and the camera sees an eye, even if it's not actively focusing, as long as the subject is sharp enough for it to discern an eye, it'll draw a little gray box around it, like little light gray boxes around the eyes. So you can see what the camera is detecting and not. So I like to have that on. Some people find it distracting. I think by default it's off, but I do like to have that on. Face memory is for memorizing people's faces. So I am... Not worried about that one at all as a wildlife photographer. That's the last thing I said in this menu. So let's go to the next one, focus assistant. Next, we have auto magnifier in MF, manual focus. Basically what this does is if I have this turned on, when I go into manual focus mode and I start turning my focus ring on the lens, what it's gonna do is it's gonna magnify the area under the AF area so that I can better focus on that so I can see it a little bit better and get maybe a little bit more accurate manual focus. Most of the time I leave that on. However, sometimes you might wanna turn it off. A lot of times the reason I'm in manual focus mode isn't so much because I'm trying to actually manual focus, but because the camera has focused on the background and I need to pull it back. So if I'm doing that a lot, I will turn this off so that I don't have that magnification because com sometimes that's a little bit distracting. But if I'm actually legitimately like manually focusing, this is really nice to have. Next, we have focus magnifier. And if you notice, it is grayed out. And the reason for that is because it's an AFS only feature. I don't use AFS. So the rest of the items in here are for that focus magnifier. And that's all AFS stuff as wildlife photographers. You're probably like me, you're using AFC all the time. You never see AFS. So the rest of this menu actually does not apply. Next, we have peaking display, and basically focus peaking is going to paint color on whatever it is we're trying to manually focus. So if we're in manual focus mode and we want to be able to kind of get a little helping hint as far as what's sharp and what's not, we can turn this on. So let's take a look at some of the options. The first one is peaking display, just on or off. So I usually have that on. I'm going to come in here and just turn that on. There we go. So that way I can use peaking display. It'll show up when I'm in manual focus mode. You don't have to do anything but be in manual focus mode for this to happen. Next we have peaking level and we have three choices here. We have high, mid, and low. Basically what this controls is the amount of paint on your subject. So as you're using your focus peaking and you're manually focusing, we can have different levels of paint that we can put on our subject. For lower contrast subjects, for instance, I like to use high. I like to put a little more paint on there because the camera's not seeing as many contrast lines and it makes it a little bit easier to focus. However, for subjects where there's like a lot of contrast, it can be overwhelming if you're on mid or high, so then you wanna to go to low. So this isn't like a set it and forget it setting. And it's one of those you have to kind of play with with each subject. The more you use peaking, the better you get at picking these. But I tell people start off at mid, and if it seems like you're just not seeing enough paint on the subject, go to high. And if it seems like it's too much, go to low. Pretty easy. Finally, we have peaking color. Let's take a look at that. We have four options. We have white, red, yellow, and blue. And this basically is the color of the paint that you're putting on your subject. Right, right now it happens to be on white, but this is not a set it and forget it setting either. This is going to be subject specific. So if I'm photographing a great egret, which is a white bird, and my paint color is white, I'm not going to see it real well on that bird. So I'm going to want to pick, you know, red, yellow, or blue. So, you know, depending on what color your subject is, you might need to come in here and tweak that. So uh, again, this is something I have on my function menu to make it a little bit easier to access. 
So that does it for our autofocus menu. Those are the things I changed for wildlife photography. Next, let me show you my button customization for autofocus and uh, we'll go from there. So let's head down to the setup menu and set up the buttons that I use for autofocus. So we're going to go to Operation Customize, option number three there. We're going to go to Custom Key Setting, the top one there with the little photo. These are for the you know photography, the still photo settings here. And into Custom Key Setting. So the first thing I want to do is set my autofocus area toggle. I love this one. We're going to assign this to C1 right on the top of the camera. This is Custom Button 1. It's the third option here on screen three of four. And just go ahead and give that a click. I'd like to show you where this is. It's going to be switch focus area is the menu option we're looking for. And that's going to be under the focus area menu here on the selection menu. And you can see switch focus areas right there. Just go ahead and give that a click. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to toggle from one of your AF areas to the other. Now, we've already restricted the number of AF areas we have, so we only have five. And we toggle through them really quick with this. If you notice right here, I am on the spot AF area. If I press C1, I'm going to go to spot medium. One more press gets me to spot large. And then another press gets me to wide. Another press to zone, and then of course one more press back to spot. This is incredibly quick to change in the field, and this is actually one of the reasons I don't use those registered AF areas, because it's just so fast to get from one to the other pressing the C1 button. And after a while, you kind of get a feel for exactly how far the different area modes are from each other. So in this case, I know zone is four presses away from my single point. So I'll go one, two, three, four, and just like that, I'm in zone takes no time at all. And it's been very, very fast. I found this very, very helpful in the field when I rapidly need to change autofocus areas and highly recommend you give it a try. Again, we're going to, we assigned all of that to C1. Next, let me share with you how I have my buttons on the back of the camera set up for focus. Now I'm a back button AF shooter, so I'm going to show you that first, but then I'm going to show you how you would use this with shutter release focus too, if you prefer that. So let's take a look. First, we're going to go back to custom key setting for the photos again, the top one. And we're going to go to page one of four. And let's start with option number two here, our AEL button. And you can see I have that set for AF on. Let me show you where that is in the menu system. I'm going to give that a click. That's on page 18 of 31 for this particular button. And it's under AF slash MF and AF on. Now those page numbers you see up in the upper right there, they can actually vary a little bit. So if you're assigning buttons to different places and you're not finding the features in the same spot, that's why you'll have to just kind of navigate through the menus there, like under AF slash MF, and it'll still be there. So anyhow, AF on. And the next one we're going to set is our AF on button. And that's going to be for tracking an AF on, and that's going to be on page 19 to 31 under that focus area menu, and it's tracking on plus AF on. So that's what we're going to set for our AF on button. And that's pretty much it. Let me show you how this works. So the reason I set my camera this way is simple. Every Sony AF area has a corresponding tracking version of itself. So we can access those with this tracking on plus AF on option that we have set on our camera. So that's really, really cool because that means Let's say we have five AF areas that we use right now. You saw that earlier. We got rid of all the tracking areas. We only have those five normal areas. Now, without this option, I'd actually have to have 10 areas, five for tracking and five for just the normal AF areas. Now, maybe I wouldn't use that many, but the point is I'd have a lot more to go through. This way, I can select any of my normal AF areas, and when I press AF on, instead of being a normal area, it'll give me the tracking version of that area. So when I press AEL, I'm going to get my normal AF area. When I press AF on, I'm going to get my tracking version of that area. Let me show you how this works real quick. We have a little stormtrooper here. He's kind of volunteered to help us today. So right now we're just in spot, and I'm just going to focus with the AEL button. So that's going to focus normally. Remember, we have that set for AF on, and that's what it did. Focus normally, nothing to it, right? Now watch what happens when I press AF on. Now I have the tracking version of spot AF. And you can see I have a tracking box on him. So I can go back and this works with any mode. So let's say I go to press it four times, go to zone and I press my AEL button and you can see just normal zone, right? Press AF on and I have the tracking version of zone. So pretty sweet. And the thing is this makes it so much better in the field because 
I can pick an appropriate AF area. And if I want to try it in tracking mode, let's say spot AF is the right one to use. And if I want to try it in tracking mode and see if it sticks to my subject or whatever, I can do that. If it's not sticking very well in tracking mode, I can say, hey, let me just use it as a normal AF area. And instead of using AF on, I just slide over to AEL. Now you, of course, can switch these if you would rather have it the other way. Personally, I use tracking most of the time and the AF on button is slightly more ergonomic in my opinion than the AEL button. So that's why I have it set to AF on, but obviously do what works best for you. Okay, so what if you're a shutter release focuser, right? What if you don't want to use back button AF? Well, it works in a very, very similar way. So we're going to go back to our custom key setting on that first page, one of four. Go to option three for our AF on button. And instead of tracking on plus AF on, we're just going to select tracking on. Focus is still going to come from a half press of my shutter, but tracking is going to be toggled on and off by pressing AF on. So if I want to use my AF areas normally, I just would half press my shutter everything would be fine. If I want to use them as a tracking mode, I would just get my thumb involved and press the AF on button to engage tracking mode. That's all there is to it. And again, as for AEL, you can set that now to whatever you like. You don't have to use it for AF on like I do for back button focus. So, but the bottom line is no matter how you use this setup, it does seem to work really well. And I highly encourage you to at least give it a try. I think you'll like it. Okay. Next, we need a way to manually focus the camera. We need a manual focus override. The thing is, a lot of Sony lenses don't allow you to just grab the focus ring and manually focus on the fly, right? You have to go into manual focus mode, then this ring becomes active and you can actually focus with it. So in order to do that, I have set that to a press of the multi-selector, basically the joystick here. And the option I use is number one, the AF slash MF selector hold. Give that a click. And that is on page 17 of 30 for the joystick there at the top of the AF slash MF menu there, as you can see. So the way this works is pretty straightforward. If I press in on the joystick, it's going to put the camera into manual focus mode. And I'll be able to use this ring to focus the camera. When I take my finger off of that button, I'm going to be back into normal autofocus mode. So if I press the AF on button again, in my case, then it's going to focus. If I don't touch anything, the camera will just, you know, stay at the focus distance that I manually focused. Now I have this set for the hold option. So that means that anytime I'm pressing it, I can manually focus. But as soon as I stop, I can't manually focus anymore. Now, if you notice here, we have another option on that page 17 to 30 for a toggle. And this is, I think, especially if you're using like shutter release focus, this is probably a better, better choice. But what this does is when you press the button, it goes into manual focus mode. And when you press it again, it goes back into autofocus, but you have to press it twice rather than just holding it like I'm doing. So depending on how you're wired and which setup you're using for autofocus, whether it's back button or front button, that'll determine which setting here you want to use. Again, I think for a back button shooter, the hold option, you can just press it down, get it focused, let it go, and then you're good. You don't have to worry about it. But if you're using shutter release, you don't want to get it focused, then have press and have the camera focus again, right? So for me, because I'm a back button shooter, I'm going to pick AF slash MF select or hold. All that said, one of the main reasons I use this isn't so much because I want to be out there manually focusing. It's because sometimes a camera gets like stuck on a background and I need it to be a little bit closer over towards the subject. So I'll go into manual focus override, kind of get the focus on the subject or just in front of it roughed in a little bit. And then I'll go back to autofocus and, and pick it up from there. So that's usually why I'm using this. And it works really well. So let's talk about face and eye detection and some of the options I have set for that. So next, let's talk about face and eye detection, right? Everyone likes that. That's one of the main features of the Sony A1, but we need some control of that. And I've laid out three different things I can do with that right across the center of that control wheel on the back. So let me show you how I have this set up. So the first option we come to is number two, which is just the center button. And I have that set for face slash eye subject select. So let me show you where that is. I'm going to give that a click. And that is under face slash eye AF. And you can see the face slash eye subject select. Make sure you select the select one. That's page 20 of 30. And when we give that a click, we're actually going to have another opportunity to narrow down what the camera is selecting. We've already set this back earlier in the video so that human is unchecked. But if you want to fine tune that or adjust it here, you can. And once everything's done, you just go ahead and hit OK. And what that's going to do is when I press that center button, it's going to switch from, in my case, it's going to toggle from animal to bird and back to animal. In fact, I can show you that here. If I go here, if you just watch on the bottom there, there's 
bird, and then I press it again, and there's animal, and there's bird. It's very fast, and the nice thing about it is I don't have to look away from the viewfinder. I can feel that center button real easy just bringing my thumb down. So if I'm on a subject and I realize that I'm on the wrong type of subject, maybe I'm on a bird and I have animals selected, all I have to do is go down, press, and I'm done. And a lot of times if I'm out in the field and I see that the camera isn't really getting on the eye, then I just go down, just give that a click to make sure that I'm on the correct subject type. And most of the time when that happens, I'm not. So very, very quick, very easy, and very fast in the field. Next, we have option three, which is face slash eye priority off toggle. This is basically just an on and off switch for the subject detection, for the face and eye detection. So let's take a quick look at that. So I'm going to give that a click. That's on page 18 of 28 under face slash IAF, and you can see it's the second option there, the priority off toggle. So finally, we have our option four here, and that is the right button, and I have that set to switch between the right and the left eyes. So let me show you where that is, give it a click. That is under face slash IAF on page 18 of 28, and it is the second one from the bottom there, so pretty easy. Give that a click. And now anytime I want to switch eyes, all I have to do is press the right side of that control wheel and it'll do it for me. And one of the reasons I have this set is sometimes the camera actually gets on the wrong thing or the wrong eye. So sometimes it's handy. I don't use this a lot though. Most of the time the A1 is pretty good about being on the correct eye. But the problem is, is if it's not, or if it thinks it sees an eye next to the real eye, sometimes you can use this setting to get it back on track. The thing is with eye detection, if it's working, it's great, but if it's on the wrong thing, sometimes you want to be able to either switch it real quick or hit the other side of the button and just turn it off altogether. I have both options and all of this can be done without ever taking your eye from the viewfinder. It's super, super handy and I highly recommend you give it a try. So there you have it, my basic autofocus setup for the Sony A1. Again. This is only the very tip of the iceberg. My Sony A1 setup guide has even more information for setting up and using the AF features of the camera. In addition, it covers the rest of my menu settings, my user memory settings, my FN menu, my complete button and dial setups, and even cool things like my emergency action button and how to use it. It's all presented in a very friendly, easy to understand language and is loaded with examples of how I use these settings in the field. Think of it this way, you spent 6,500 bucks on the camera and this is less than a lunch date at McDonald's. Give it a look, I promise you're gonna love it. Finally, make sure you stop by my site and sign up for my free email newsletter so you never miss one of my videos, an article, workshop opportunity, or any of the other cool things that I put out there in the world. And as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and get notified. As always, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.